where the mighty Atlantic meets the graceful Arad in a country with an illustrious and glorious maritime history, the F1H20 season begins. UIM F1H to a World Championship launched into its 35th season at the Grand Prix of Portugal in Portimao, the start of another season-long campaign to claim the most coveted title in world powerboat racing. Portimao has become one of the standard and favorite stops on the F1H20 Tour, having hosted the event 16 times and having become the traditional season opener. Situated in the Algarve region, this is one of the most spectacular corners of southern Portugal, a lively tourism destination with all the sun, sea and surf you can ask for. A historic fishing town, Portimao lives and breathes at one with the sea. The breathtaking coastline is overlooked by towering cliffs and rocky shores, with sandy beaches that stretch out as far as the eye can see, attracting visitors year-round. Portimao also boasts some of the best golf links in the country and is famous for its fresh and delectable cuisine with seafood fresh out of the sea and onto the plate. The sardine dishes of this region are famous and there's a whole festival dedicated to them, filling the town's restaurants with visitors from all over the country. The crowds once again flock to the banks of the Arad River to take in the 16th UIM F1H to a World Championship Grand Prix in Portimao, kicking off the 35th season of F1H20. Those who are brave enough have the chance to experience the thrill of being in an F1H20 boat firsthand with a ride in the F1H20 two-seater, where you can truly taste the thrill and excitement of F1 racing. The team driver lineups for 2018 are almost unrecognizable compared with the previous year after a prolific pre-season of cockpit reshuffles that began the moment the checkered flag dropped in Sharjah to close out 2017. Nine teams and 19 drivers from 12 countries made up the 2018 entry which boasts three multiple world champions and nine drivers who have climbed onto the top step of the podium. One team that has held firm and steadfast is F1 Atlantic with local hero and last year's Portimao podium placer Duarte Benevente of Portugal. He continues his solid partnership with Australian Grant Trask and the Portuguese outfit led the field of teams into the year's first event. Of course, the man to beat is Alex Carella, the 2017 world champion with his fourth world championship title under his belt. After losing the World Championship to Philip Schiap three years in a row, he has bounced back and regained the world crown in style last season. But now he switched the Team Abu Dhabi colors for Victory Blue, and he has a brand new victory boat, the 2018 Challenger. I was like eight years, I was in uh, one DAC cockpit, and uh, first time in the victory boat take me some time to all changed the sound uh, and everything, so it took me some uh, some lap. But after I lap by lap, I take the feeling. I'm so happy and proud to race for uh, for this team, and uh, I can't wait to to try to win the four race for them. He pairs up with seven-time Grand Prix winner Ahmed Al Hamali under team manager and multiple world champion Scott Gilman. Alex Carella has switched seats with Sean Torrente, who has left victory team for Team Abu Dhabi, racing under legendary 10-time world champion and team manager Guido Capellini. He's finished on the year-end podium four consecutive times in the last five years, and he now has the might of Team Abu Dhabi to back him up in his pursuit of his first world championship. It's kind of neat because it's our first race, but it doesn't feel like it's our first race because we've been doing so much testing. We've raced at Rouen, a race ex at Fujera. So we've really spent a lot of time together. Um, I think I have more laps at this point than I did all of last year combined of all the races. So um, I'm excited to get started finally. It seems like it was never going to get here. Torrente will have two outstanding teammates to race alongside him. The veteran, former world number two and seven time Grand Prix winner. <laughs> 
winner, Dani Al Kamzi, and his talented up and coming namesake, Rashid Al Kamzi. In CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, it's business as usual. The team once again headed by three time consecutive world champion and last year's world runner up, Philip Schiap of France. Despite kicking the 2017 season off with a win in Portimao, he had faltered yet again in home waters in Evian, France. For this year, we have uh, only one objective it's a world champion back. His teammate Peter Morin is settling in well too, racking up 10 points for the team in 2017, his debut year. In Team Sweden, last year's world number five Jonas Anderson is teamed up with Eric Eden. Eric Stark no longer part of the lineup. Last year was a tough one for two-time world champion Sammy Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team. It was just one crash and mishap after another for the Finn in 2017, but he still managed to end the year in sixth place. He'll be teamed up with a young Finn, Philip Roms, once again. Poland's Bartek Marszalek moved to Emirates Racing as the 34-year-old from Warsaw lined up alongside teammate Moritz Stromoy for the second time in his seven-year stint in the championship following his debut in Portimao in 2011. Marszalek's place and Blaze's performance has been filled by Simone Bianca Schuft, only the second female driver on the tour this year. I was before in the Formula 2 and the Formula 2 boat has a very, very big block of the engine, so uh, it uh, reacts more slower and uh, you feel more weight and this one is more light going and more easy driving and uh, you, you feel that it is uh, more flying because you have not the weight in, the, in, in your back. It makes fun. I think I can get used to it, yes. <laughs> She'll have the experience of prolific 12-time Grand Prix winner, team leader, boat designer and builder Francesco Cantando of Italy on her side. And in a last-minute shake-up, last year's world number three Eric Stark of Sweden joined Cedric de Guin in Maverick F1 Racing, the Swedish sensation hoping to improve on his first year-end podium in 2017. The Grand Prix of Portugal was once again raced on the Arad River, a seven-pin circuit with one right-hander, tough river currents and tides to negotiate, and three straightaways over 400 meters in length. Well, at the moment now, the, the biggest issue is to get clear line from the north to the south side, because it's like a small banana all the way, and you want to do it as, as straight as you can. So going quite far off, uh, and wide on the north side of the corner and then go as straight as you can onto the south corner. That's the issue. But sometimes the wind, uh, the waves, not, they don't really want to take you there. So this is, this is the key issue. If we can have a straight line, it will be a fast lap for sure. It's a very technical circuit because you have um, a lot of uh, different turn and different uh, way. And uh, I think it's a, it's a track for um, uh, experienced driver. BRM official qualifying was contested over three sessions. The field reduced to 12 in Q1, then down to six in Q2. In Q3, the last six boats have a course to themselves with two laps each to lay down the fastest time in a bid for pole position. In Q1, Sammy Celio stormed off the pontoon with engine problems early on. He was unable to get a good lap time in. Eric Stark was off the pace, struggling and unable to qualify for Q2. Eric Eden of Team Sweden was in the top 12 and set for a Q2 showing, putting in 22 laps before Francesco Cantando found the speed with minutes left and bumped Eden out. Cedric de Guin is also out in Q1, as is newcomer Simone Bianca Schuft. In Q2, it was a showdown between Duarte Benevente and Peter Morin of CTIC F1 Shenzhen, China. Back and forth between the two before Peter Morin squeezes Benevente out to qualify for his first ever top six in Q3. Bad luck for Jonas Anderson, the fastest man in Q1. He barely makes it back to the pontoon with a sinking boat. <laughs> a 
with the lamination issue. Bert Stromoy was unable to find the pace she needed, finishing eighth. I had a couple of boats that she was trying to do everything to destroy my moment, so uh, they ended up in the Q3, and let's see if karma hits them. I hope it does. In Q1 and Q2, it's all about finding that clean water and seizing those rare opportunities where you can find them. Some teams can use that to their advantage, and strategy is key. Rashid Alkamzi is out in Q2, but his teammates Torrente and Tani Alkamzi are through to the final six. Also out in Q2 were Francesco Cantando and Grant Trask. Q3, Peter Morin was out first, setting a time of 42.16 but would it be good enough? Next out was Alex Corella. The Italian victory ace beats Marin's time, 42.02, but unable to break the 42 second mark. Then Team Abu Dhabi's Sean Torrente heads out. He's racing with all guns blazing, an incredible run. He smokes Corella's lap time and takes provisional pull with a blistering 41.68 with three more boats to go. Yeah, but this is worse than doing the lap. I'm waiting for, oh sorry, he's waiting for everybody else. I left a little bit too, that's the problem, that's why I'm worried. If I got everything, we would be worried. Torrente's teammate was also fast, very fast. He broke the 42 second mark as well, doesn't beat his teammate, but leaves Corella behind to take second position with a 41.75 lap time. Ahmed Al Hamali of victory doesn't make a dent in Torrente's time, nearly half a second off the pace. That left one man who could spoil the party for everyone, Philip Schiap. He goes all out. His first lap is fast, but not enough to take pole. One lap left. Torrente is all nerves. Can he get his fourth career pole position? Schiap lays down the final lap, and it's not enough. Torrente has it. Torrente gets pole position. Torrente got pole position, Dani Alkamzi naps P2, Corella starts third on the starting grid, then Al Hamali, Shia, and Peter Marin with a best ever pontoon position in sixth. Yeah, let me tell you, man, like I said, six months of preparation um, for the season. I love the work that we put in. It shows with us being first and second. It shows how strong the team is. So hopefully we can do the same tomorrow, get a good start, and finish this off in the right way, and start the season correct. Days racing over, teams, drivers, and their families and crew got a chance to wind down and enjoy some sumptuous Portuguese hospitality as Portimao welcomed F1H2O to their town for the 16th time. Torrential rains would make visibility extra challenging, but some drivers knew these conditions well. I uh, know this uh, kind of condition uh, when we race in 24 hours, so uh, no problem to race. Visibility is uh, just the minimum. We have to careful. The rain cleared, the parade lap commenced, and the sun even made a brief appearance as boats lined up on the start pontoon. Things weren't looking sunny for Celio and Mad Croc Baba. Yeah, we have been struggling technical issues all week, and that's it. Zero points for Portugal and a lot of broken engines, and now we need to go to back to workshop and see what's going on and try to fix everything to London. I start from fourth position behind uh, my teammate. Uh, he's in the third position. My right hand is going to be Philip Chip, so it's going to be a hard start today. The starting lineup, it's a Team Abu Dhabi 1-2 leading the field with Torrente on pole and Daniel Kamzi beside him. Then two victories to their right with two CTIC boats beside them. Localize on Benevente starting in seventh, Stromoy and Anderson at the back with De Guin and Simone Schaup. The final seconds, drivers ready, final preparations complete. The silence before the roar as the th <laughs> Oh! 
75th F1H2O season is about to get underway. It's on. Torrente and al Kamsi start well. Corella has a tough start, falling back as Schiap and al Hamali lock horns in the long opening straightaway to the commitment buoy. Daniel Kamsi begins to pull away from his teammate, pole sitter Sean Torrente, as they lead proceedings. Corella struggling to keep up. Eric Stark and Eric Eden going head to head with Eric Eden leading. Stark gains on his fellow Swede, but Eden pulls away. The fleet gets to the commitment buoy. Torrente there first with that inside line advantage. Al Kamsi right behind him. Al Hamali is third, but Corella cuts in tight on the turn to go neck and neck with his victory teammate, and Al Hamali and Corella fight for third. Al Hamali on the outside shuts out Corella as they come around buoy seven. But there's Shep, even farther on the outside. He has the speed and he pounces, passing Corella on the next buoy. Now his teammate, Peter Marin, on the attack. He also passes Corella as he slips up, coming around buoy six. Grant Trask is also gaining on Corella, the Australian F1 Atlantic driver going all out to try and move up into sixth position. But Corella holds firm as Trask negotiates the spray. It's an ideal start for Team Abu Dhabi and Torrente, the American leading in the opening laps as he begins his 2018 campaign. Bartek Marsalek is passed by Moritz Stromoy, who goes up against Jonas Anderson, and the two collide. Here it is from Stromoy's on board as Anderson and Stromoy crash into each other, and they're out of the race. Anderson's engine on fire. He's fine as he gets out quick and turns off the main electrical circuit. Disappointment for Team Sweden as their woes continue. One day sinking, the next day burning. Not a good start to the year. Osprey rescue team quick on the scene, rescuing driver and the boat before it sinks. It was quite hard. It was, we came from two completely different lines and uh, he came from the outside. I turned the inside and bang. I was lucky I didn't flip over. If you meet the Norwegian woman, it's a problem if you're you a Swede. <laughs> Not my weekend, huh? The yellow flag bunch up and the field back in starting order with all gains reset as Team Abu Dhabi boats are followed by the blue victories to their rear, followed by two CTIC boats. The green flag goes up, the race is back on on lap four. This is Alex Corella's chance to take on Al Kamzi and see if he can get into second position as the two go neck and neck, but Al Kamzi holds the Italian off. Meanwhile, it's a bad start for Ahmed Al Hamali as first Shiap overhauls the victory driver, then Peter Morin, the two CTIC Frenchmen moving up into fourth and fifth respectively. Alex Corella unable to dislodge Al Kamzi, but he holds on to third. Further back, Marshalek overtakes the lone mad croc driver, Philip Roms, the young Finn driving blind through Marshalek's spray. Lap five, the field reduced to 16 boats. The leader, Sean Torrente, with nearly a second lead on his teammate, Al Kamzi. Corella third, then Schiappa Morin chasing in fourth and fifth. Benevente holds on to seventh after the restart. The Portuguese driver, a podium placer here last year, eighth is Cantando of Blaze, then Grant Trask, the Aussie driver in ninth, Eric Eden in tenth, followed by last year's world number three, Eric Stark. The two Eric's having passed Rashid Al Kamsi in twelfth for Team Abu Dhabi. Eric Eden moves up on Grant Trask's port side, trying to wrest ninth from the Aussie, and the young Team Sweden driver does it. He moves up a spot as Trask now is the one chasing Eric Eden. Grant Trask now has another Swede to contend with, Maverick F1 racer Eric Stark, as Stark also overhauls the F1 Atlantic driver. Trask bumped down to 12th as the two Eric's battle it out in 9th and 10th. Team Abu Dhabi with first and second positions. You would wonder why they look worried, but now they know that there's the task of winding through the back markers without losing speed, rhythm, and momentum, while also avoiding any possible mishaps or collisions. Torrente and Al Kamzi also have to hold off two multiple world champions who are right behind them, Shiap and Corella, with seven world championships between them. These two drivers have taken turns at denying the other of a fourth consecutive oh. 
consecutive world title, a feat only ever achieved by Guido Capellini. Further back, the inter-Swedish rivalry continues between the two Eriks. Rookie Eric Eden leading his former Team Sweden teammate Eric Stark, who was a last-minute inclusion in Portimao with his new team Maverick F1 Racing. Another driver out is Philip Roms, ending a dismal first round for Mad Croc Baba. The field reduced to 15 boats by lap 10. Local hopeful Duarte Benevente is racing steady. No drama there as he continues to hold on to seventh, but behind him is 12-time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando in his new blaze boat. Cantando having had a lackluster few seasons on the tour, wanting to get back in the points with a good start here as he eyes Benevente's seventh position. Radio men and women face a race-long task of helping their drivers negotiate the circuit and especially in clearing their way around backmarkers. Peter Marin's radio person tries to secure a path for him around Cedric de Guin, who's currently in 13th. And there's the 2018 newcomer Simone Bianca Schuft for Blaze Performance Team, is currently in 15th. By lap 21, the race is firmly still in Team Abu Dhabi's grasp as Torrente and Alcamzi lead proceedings in this 48-lap race. The drama continues in the timing area as Torrente's radio man runs up to Team Sweden and tries to get Eric Eden out of his man's way as the lead drivers negotiate their way through the back markers. The dogfight continues between Alex Corella and Philip Schiep, the Frenchman wanting to wreak his revenge on the man who denied him four world titles in a row. The white CTIC Moorboat chasing Corella's blue victory 2018 challenger. Alex Corella pushing his boat to the limit, almost losing control as he carves and weaves around the back markers. Shiop swerves offline through Corella's spray, losing speed before getting back on target. But Corella also falters, and Shiop finally finds the speed to pass Alex Corella in this battle of the world champions. Alex Corella bumped down, experiencing some trim issues out there. Philip Shiap is up in third position. Now he's the one setting the Team Abu Dhabi boats in his sights with just 14 laps left in the race. There's Bartek Barshalek, last year's world number 10, racing for Emirates and trying to move up from 13th position. Bad luck for Grant Trask, the F1 Atlantic driver is out of the race, as is Cedric de Guin, reducing the field further down to 13 boats. With 10 laps to go, what a race Peter Morin is putting in. In just his second season on the tour, he's in fifth place, chasing down four-time and defending world champion Alex Corella with 1.21 seconds to close. Meanwhile, Sean Torrente, the runaway race leader, just has a few more laps for his first win of the season, with Alkamzi and Shiap closing in as he tries to get past backmarker Ahmed Alhamali. Torrente's radio man working behind the scenes, exchanging words with Alhamali's radio man Scott Gilman in these closing stages. The final lap, Sean Torrente on his way to taking his fourth career Grand Prix win as he races to the finish line and the checkered flag to claim his first ever Portuguese Grand Prix. Daniel Kamzi, runner-up for a brilliant Team Abu Dhabi 1-2. What a start to the season for Capellini's crew. What a start to the season for Sean Torrente. That boat is ridiculous. It is so damn good. I just managed the race. They told me my gap. I kept it at five, four, four or five seconds the whole time and just uh, managed it. The end got a little sketchy because I know my old best friend, not really, wasn't going to let me by. So I just managed in the race, but it was great. Al Kamzi runner up, adding 15 to his tally. Shiap on the podium. Corella fourth for nine points. What a result for Peter Marin, emerging from Shiap's shadow to take seven points. Good result for a very consistent Benevente in home waters coming in seventh. Very I'm very happy today to finish the race second. And we team made the best, first and second. For star season, very good. I'm happy today for my boat, for my mechanic, for my teammate, team manager, everyone. Thank you. Team Abu Dhabi continues where it left off. Last year's team champions start the new season on top with a maximum 35 points. CTIC in second with that brilliant run from Peter Marin. And in third, victory with 14 points. No, it's very hard race and it was funny for me because I like these tracks and uh, a lot of waves. Uh, I do push and the boat fly everywhere. I do fighting with uh, Carella and after with Tani. And uh, I have a very good setup. The season starts uh, well and you are... Oh, 
actually work for London. It was just a perfect weekend. It's the way it's supposed to be. You know, we, we tested, we prepared for a few months and for one month just for this event. And uh, we got here, we put the best motor on that we knew we had. We, we both knew which props we were going to run from testing and we went out there and just, just executed, just did our jobs. No more, no less, and you see the result. It's great. Torrente off to a brilliant start with his new team. His teammate Alkamzi right behind him. Shiap and Corella know they'll have their work cut out for them this season against Team Abu Dhabi. That concludes the Portuguese Grand Prix, round one of the 2018 season. See you in London for the first UIM F1H2O World Championship Grand Prix in 33 years.